Good morning and welcome to St. Timothy's. Um, some announcements this morning. Things are a little different today. We have with us the Reverend Robin Walker, who will be serving as our officiant today. And jo Dr. Joy Berg is serving as our musician this morning. Um, a very important announcement from the Synod office, um, a prayer for the children, the 215 children that were found on the grounds of a former residential school in BC. The following prayer was offered by the Most Reverend Mark MacDonald, the National Indigenous Anglican Archbishop, um, a couple years ago, honoring all children who did not return home from residential schools. Almighty God, we remember before you all of the children, our dear relatives who did not return home from the residential schools. May you remember their suffering and pain. May you grant them rest in the land of peace. May you surround them with beautiful and sacred love and joy. We pray to you also for ourselves and our children. At a time like this, we remember we need your spirit so very much. We pray to you, your spirit prays through us, in the name of Jesus, who suffered with us, but raised us, and will raise us with our departed loved ones. Amen. And continuing on with the announcements, which we will find in the bulletin that is printed in the link, link below the um, service that you received via email, um, we have our parish newsletter on its way to you in the mail. Um, there's lots of stuff, fun stuff. It's a it's a colorful, colorful um, newsletter. It'll be an enjoyable read. We want to thank Jen for all her work on it. Reverend, the reason I'm up here is because Reverend Lorne will be is away visiting family from June 18th through 2 and including July 12th. All regular services and studies will continue while Reverend Lorne is away. Um, clergy will be available for emergencies and other needs. And please contact myself as the People's Warden or Barb Saint as the Rector's Warden for any assistance or support. No, Reverend Lauren will be participating in the Episcopal election on June 26, um, and we'll be seeing his face popping up on the Zoom grid, grid from where he is in the Okanagan. And as I said, that Reverend Walker will be leading services while Lauren is away, and Dr. Jo Berg will be leading the music. So thank you to both of you, we appreciate it. June birthdays, happy birthday to Shandy, Joyce, Adam, and Graham. Um, a note that Vestry Minutes, if you're looking for to see copies of what Vestry's up to, check the minutes out by contacting the church office. As indicated earlier, the Episcopal election is coming up. Um, lots of information on the Anglican Diocese of Edmonton website about the eight people who have put their names forward. Please keep them in your prayers. Also, please um, speak to myself or Mick Farrell or Leonard Zaziku, who are the um, lay delegates for St. Timothy's at this upcoming election, which happens on Saturday, June 26. We are um, still uh, following the guidelines of the diocese about live streaming services and being careful about reopening. We're watching this, these developments very carefully and any, uh, any news about reopening, um, we'll be sure to get it out when it happens. But Vestry is meeting, is going to be meeting throughout the summer to discuss this issue of reopening. Masks are required at all times inside the church according to the City of Edmonton bylaw. We are still continuing with our Monday book study while, uh, while Reverend Lorne is away. We're studying Harold Kushner's book, The Lord is My Shepherd, and you're welcome to join in at any time. Just contact the, par the parish office and we'll ensure that the Zoom link gets set out to you. And finally, um, registration for EFM is now open, Education for Ministry. Um, there's a link in the, dial in the bulletin that you've received this morning. And that concludes the announcements. Please um, prepare yourself for worship. Thank you. Thank you. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Entrance hymn, lift every voice and sing. To worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry, 
and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in the ways, your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We exchange peace in the name of Christ as we are able. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us from all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Our first reading this morning is from the book of 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, he had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me, if he is able to fight with me and kill me. Then we will be your servants, but if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, of the, Philist the, champion the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. 
Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from them, from the paw of the lion, and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So David, so Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried to walk in faith, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wa water and put them in his shepherd's bag. In the pouch, his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is the, from the book of the second Corinthians as we work together with Christ 
we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the wee waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Hymn of the day, the, the battle is the Lord's.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I've heard people on both ends of the theological spectrum lament that people today, even dedicated church people, are lacking in biblical knowledge. While the, op while the opposite viewpoints are making the same point for different reasons, the statement remains true. Making a scriptural reference in many places today will mostly give rise to blank stares. The habit of Bible reading has largely disappeared from our lives and people's knowledge about Bible stories has waned correspondingly. I have to confess myself that before I went to seminary, my own biblical knowledge was minimal, mostly relating back to what I learned or maybe mislearned in Sunday school, and then a bit of Bible study at the parish before I left. But could have known more. But one of the effects of all of this is that biblical stories no longer carry the weight they once did. And it's usually unhelpful to, return, to refer to a current event in biblical terms. Stories carry significance, weight, when they are shared among people. Many societies have struck themselves around these shared stories, what social scientists call their myths, with a capital M. If you're a Star Trek fan, you may rem remember the episode Darmok, in which Captain Picard encounters an alien who speaks entirely in mythic references. And in that culture, certain stories were so ingrained in their collective consciousness that they only had to refer to the story to communicate. And it took a while for Jean-Luc Picard to grasp just what was happening. But I'm sorry, Trekkies, this one's not actually about Star Trek. Rather, it's about one of the few biblical stories that actually seems to have withstood the deluge of scriptural ignorance. David and Goliath's stories abound in popular culture. I was reminded of this when my wife and I watched a recent TV series called Rebel, inspired by the life and work of Aaron Brockovich. The movie <clears throat> with that name came out in the year 2000, and it's the mostly true story of a woman who took on a giant utility company and won. Aaron Brockovich went on from that first success to have a remarkable career of fighting City Hall and helping others do the same. It's a David and Goliath story. But why is this story? this kind of story so appealing. I believe in part because it shows that the little people can challenge the powerful and win, especially when right is on their side. The story isn't unique. Most other ancient civilizations had heroes who had prevailed against the great and powerful. These stories provide a powerful energy, energizer to ordinary people telling them that what the dominant script calls for will not always be the way. The little people can win. They can fight City Hall. So let's take a longer look at it. What we hear here is actually an example of a practice of warfare that was known in ancient times, and we, it, it's notably present a couple of times in the Iliad, but it's really vanished in the modern era. A battle of champions had something to commend it, because it saved further bloodshed on both sides. Soldiers would get to go home to their families, whatever the outcome. Of course, it depended upon the prowess of the champions, and the Philistines clearly believed that they had an unbeatable one. Goliath is described in hyperbolic terms that would strike fear into most of us today. He's like the 900-pound gorilla in the joke. Where does the gorilla sit when he comes into your house? Anywhere he wants. 
A fiercely champion like this Philistine assumed that he could work his will on anyone the Israelites could send out against him. And Saul and his army believed so too. The Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And who could blame them? Furthermore, who could fault them for skepticism when the young, unarmed shepherd David said he would take on the giant warrior? Uh, trying to level the playing field as best he could, Saul armed David with his own armor and weapons, but David would have none of that. He chose not to use the conventional weapons of warfare, sword, spear, and armor, with which he was inexperienced, opting to use what he knew and the skills he had. He might not be a trained swordsman, but he was a fast runner, and a deadly shot with a sling. And that is what brought Goliath down. Heavily armed, proceeding slowly, take, Goliath was taken by surprise and felled with one smooth stone. David had the skills to win this battle, but more than that, he had the full conviction that right was on his side. He was fighting the battle for the living God who had saved him from lion and bear in the past. And the skills themselves were gifts from God. The little guy won in this story. We remember it, I believe, for precisely that reason. The biblical narrative would have been hugely different if it had existed at all if David had not won. But when he did, against all apparent odds. I use City Hall as a metaphor for the might of the powers that be, the conventional winner of many battles, both large and small, where might seemingly makes right. The Roman Empire believed in peace through victory and then held their vassal states in bondage. Peace, yes, but at what price? The message of the prophetic tradition is that peace comes through justice, God's ways, not military might. And the message of the gospel is that might does not make right. It was the might of the Roman Empire that sent Jesus to the cross, trying to get rid of an annoying person who appeared to threaten a carefully maintained but uneasy peace in Judea. One important lesson, a huge lesson, I believe we can take from the story of David and Goliath, is that God equips the people of God with the tools and skills necessary for God's way to prevail in an unjust world. I've served the church in various roles in different places. And one of the most common complaints almost everywhere goes like, if we only had this, we could do that. In other words, we don't have enough to do what we want to. But my friends, what we should always try to remember is that God has already equipped us to do the work that we have been called to do. Not to do what we want, but what God wants. David had the skills. David had faith that God had gifted him with those skills. David had faith that his cause was just. His cause was God's cause. We can and we should fight City Hall. When the cause is just, when God's reign will be advanced by our work, and when we give thanks to God for the gifts we have received, putting them to use in the furtherance of God's sovereignty on earth, as it is in heaven. God, 
Give us the grace and the strength to do these things. Your kingdom come. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. moment of silence let us bring to mind those things which we offer up to God our time our talent our treasure all that we are let us pray eternal God you have made our Savior Jesus Christ the head of all creation Receive all we offer you this day, and renew us in his risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. In our prayers today, we are asked to pray in the parish for Eunice, Rod, and June and their families. For continued growth in faith, hope, and love at St. Timothy's that reaches out into our various communities. In this neighborhood, we pray for Reverend James and Rio Terrace Moravian Church, for Pastors James and Anna and Hosanna, Hosanna Lutheran Church, for our Dean and Deanery, for our MP James, MLA Laurie, Ward Councillor Sarah, for our Community League President Karen, for our Family in Christ at Canterbury, and for parish family residing at other care facilities and shut-ins in our community. We are asked to pray for Sandra, Dawn, Sean, Herta, Fran, Tex, Amanda, Anne, Gail, Michael and Michael jailed in China, Bertha, Jan and their families. For those grieving loss, for those experiencing transitions, including housing transitions, for those facing new diagnoses and treatments, for all frontline workers in health and service, for all healthcare workers, including Dr. Henshaw, for good government and good citizenship. We pray for those who have died from complications due to COVID-19 and those who mourn. For those who have perished due to the impact of addictions and mental health challenges. In our diocese, we pray for our Indigenous ministry. Travis Enright, Archdeacon for Indigenous Ministry. Fiona Brownlee, Aboriginal and Rural Communities Liaison. Laurie Calkins, Indigenous Birth Support Ministry. Fred Matthews, lay reader in charge, Church of the Nativity, Prague Lake. To the Episcopal le election candidates and diocesan staff, and for our diocesan administrator, the very Reverend Alexander Meek. In the Companion Diocese of Bouye in Burundi, we pray for All Saints Cathedral. Jean Berchvans Mwening Goma, Dean, and Alfred. Uimani He, Rector. 
and the companion sister parish of Muba, we pray for their spiritual leader, Je Jeffrey and Nikumana, and the Christians he leads. Among Aboriginal communities, we pray for Red Earth First Nation and the Reverend Rita, Rita Nawakas, Rector of St. Stephen's Red Earth. In the Canadian Church, we pray for the Diocese of Arctic, for the Right Reverend David Parsons, Bishop, the Right Reverend Annie Itoshat, the Right Reverend Lucy Netzer, and the Right Reverend Joey Royal, Suffragan Bishops and for the Urban Skin Cree Nation. In the Anglican Lutheran Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Rupert's Land and among the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the Anglican Church, we remember the National Indigenous Day of Prayer to be held tomorrow for healing and reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. In the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray today for the Church of North India United. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people, and in particular, your 2S LGBTQ plus children, whom for too long the church has been a harmful place. Turn those who have actively participated in the sins of homophobia, transphobia, and fear to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Liberator. Amen. O Lord our God, Creator of heaven and earth, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have revealed yourself as a Heavenly Father to all of your children. Bless, we pray, all earthly fathers. Strengthen them to nurture, protect, and guide the children trust to their care. Instill within them the virtues of love and patience. May all fathers be slow to anger and quick to forgive. And through the ministrations of your Holy Spirit, may all fathers be strong and steadfast examples of faithfulness, responsibility, and loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. 
fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, guide and protect your people who share in this sacred mystery and keep us always in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God, whose power, working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Go on your way rejoicing, surrounded as you are by such a great cloud of witnesses. Take courage as you face each new challenge, and comfort when you pick yourself up from a fall. In whatever good you choose to do, proceed it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. The blessing of God most wonderful, whom the saints have trusted, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will be with you now and evermore. Thanks be to God. Amen. Closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. Mm -hmm. 